The Motor City. No other place in U.S. history has had more impact on four-wheeled vehicles than Detroit, Michigan. Today, four wheels definitely rule the Big D once again, but this time in the form of skateboards, with the top street skateboarders in the world descending upon downtown's Hart Plaza for the skateboard competition of the year. This is Heartlines, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey everybody, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City, Motown, Detroit Rock City. It is a town that has a number of monikers throughout its past, which is probably due to its rich, iconic history of the Midwest. This is the third year that the Big D hosts Heartlines, and in that short time, the city has really come alive and been revitalized. The streets are bustling, downtown is busy with activity, and of course, it's always been an incredibly passionate sports town. So, Heartlines is back, which is a very unique event that focuses on speed, style, and flow on a technical course that's situated in almost like a gladiator-like amphitheater at downtown's Hart Plaza. We have a bevy of international skaters here, including the man himself, Ryan Sheckler, last year's winner, Nigel Houston, and the up-and-coming superstar out of Brazil, Kelvin Hoffler. Our finals are about to begin with competitors ready to do it on lane one, so we'll check in with Todd Harris and Chris Pastris for the call. Thank you, Sal. Two lanes, two runs per lane. The runs are timed, and that is very important. Scored out of 100. Chris, speed is a huge element. Yes, that's one of the things that makes Heartlines unique. We've got a slightly smaller course this year, and the judges are really, really emphasizing difficulty out here at Heartlines. All right, before we get started, let's check in with Tina Dixon. Thanks, Todd. We actually just wrapped qualifiers down here, and there's been a couple big surprises. First off, our number one qualifier was Alec Majerus, who earlier today in practice claims that he broke his thumb. In fact, he showed it to me, and it is quite swollen and bruised, obviously not letting it bother him. Our number two qualifier was Kelvin Hoffler, who told me that he received a late invitation about a month ago, but already proving that he does belong here at Red Bull Heartlines. Now, Ryan Sheckler missed last year due to injury. He's excited to be back here, but guys, he barely squeaked into finals and we'll have his work cut out for him. Todd. All right. Thank you very much, Tina. Great to have Ryan Sheckler in the final. The man behind the Heart Lines competition. It's great to see him in the final 10. Yeah, you know, Ryan Sheckler was sitting on the sidelines last year, and he's a co-creator of the event, as you mentioned, Todd. And Ryan is just looking so strong this year for Heartlines 2017. Absolutely fit as a 27-year-old out of San Clemente, California, and he will get things started. Lane one, run one for Ryan Sheckler, an absolute superstar in the sport as he is off and running, and we are set to go. Ryan going for that front side half cab flip, sticking it into the 360 flip, nice. Going for the kick flip 5-0, not quite going 5-0 like he wanted, but uh, still a solid run so far from Ryan Sheckler, lane one, run one. And as we talked about, Chris, speed is a factor, it's an element of the scoring of the judges, and Sheckler not having any problem with speed element. Yes, Ollie over the big speed bump gap there into that 5-0, great run so far, front side flip. Got to stick this final trick into the backside nose grind, nulling 180 out. That was an excellent, excellent first run from our co-creator, Ryan Sheckler. So a small touch at the end, but not a major deduction. Nice crooked grind there through the hallway. Into that cess slide on the big wall. 
setting his feet up for that Smith grind. Great lines from Ryan. And there you see control. Backside nose grind on that hubba there. Nulling out backside 180. Hands touching down, but we will take it. That is a contest make. Covers the course in just under 35 seconds. He's scoring 83.33 for Sheckler. He's standing by with Tina. Yeah, thanks, guys. And there's no better person than Ryan Sheckler to get this started, this contest started going. Uh, Ryan, you missed last year because of injury. Just yeah. what is it like to now be back? Oh, it's great to be back. You know, it's just like I put in a lot of work, put in a lot of time to just be on my board and be happy and like, I'm not here skating a contest. I'm here skating with my friends, and um, I'm finally at a really comfortable place in my life, so I'm stoked. You know, I was watching you earlier in practice, and you were just acting like a kid in a candy yeah. candy store. How is this course? Um, it's amazing. It's just like that, you know? It's like you get here, and you expect something, and then it works out a lot better than you had expected. So this is just great. The guys that build this, Detroit, Red Bull, like, can't thank you guys enough. This is an amazing event. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Have some fun, guys. So 27-year-old Ryan Sheckler sets the mark to be 83.33 as we go back to the top of lane number one. And this is a rookie to this event, 23-year-old Paul Hart out of Jacksonville, Florida. And it's worth reiterating, Chris, you get two runs on each lane, and then we average your two best. For sure. And here you see Paul Hart dropping in. Nice frontside half cab flip. Paul is primarily known more as a video part raw street skater. So it's great to see him out here competing at Heartlines. A couple 50-50s not laying out through the hallway there. Ah, sets himself up for that super basic but very difficult trick on a rail that long. It's a frontside nose slide. Almost pulled it. Time is of the essence as he makes quick work of that fall back up on his board and riding. The good news is he gets another crack at lane one. Yes, setting himself up for the final trick here. What's Paul Hart got? Don't think he quite wanted that backside 50-50. But like you said, Todd, Best of two runs. So Paul gets another crack at lane number one. You see that frontside half cab flip perfection. And there's that frontside nose slide, a basic trick, but really difficult on a handrail of that grade that that's, that's that long. And we see backside 50-50. Solid so showing. On. Yep, so much going on in that run. His time, though, 37.1, so adjusted score is a 51 for Paul Hart, and that has him slotted into second place. Another rookie to this event, Chase Webb. He takes on lane one for the first time when we return to Hart Plaza here in Detroit, Michigan. This is Hart Lines, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Back in Detroit, Michigan for Red Bull Heartlines, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Todd Harris, Chris Pastras, and Tina Dixon, you are looking at Chase Webb, the 22-year-old out of Marietta, California, a rookie to this event. And this is a challenging event to be a rookie at, Chris, because you can't go back and hit a trip twice. You basically have to move forward at all times. For sure. And while Chase is a rookie to this Heartlines event, he is not a contest rookie. Chase entered his first contest at age six in 2001. So Chase knows what it takes to do well in a contest as you see him cruising through this course. Absolutely flying through the course. Remember, there's a timed element at Heart Lines. And right now, Chase Webb understanding the importance of speed as he makes quick work of the course in under 30 seconds. That was an amazing run from Chase Webb. All-terrain vehicle moving very quickly through the course. There you see that frontside air on the massive wall. Straight into that nose blunt slide. Precision. And then the long backside 5 0. Gapping out to this backside lip slide, adding some difficulty by taking it to fakie. Great, great showing for run number one, Chase Webb. So Chase Webb with an adjusted score of 81, and he is now standing by with our Tina Dixon down in Hart Plaza. Yeah, and Chase making that vert wall look easy. Chase, I was watching you earlier in practice, and you seem just to be really enjoying this event. Oh, yeah. I, li I like the style of it, and like I said earlier, I like going fast, and yeah, this is it's, it's awesome. You know, speed is such a big part of this event. How do you guys balance going fast and also being technical? Uh, can't really pass anything up, but sometimes you're going too fast, so I feel like that's the only way you can kind of, like, deduct points is missing stuff, but trying to get the speed, too, so... Yeah. It's been fun to watch. Thanks, Chase. Guys, 
Thanks, Tina. Back to the top of run number one, lane one. You are looking at Brazilian Kelvin Hoffler, the 24-year-old out of Sao Paulo, set to make his first run. Remember, it's two runs on each lane, but timing is an element. And then, of course, Chris, you have to factor in style, consistency, and smoothness. Definitely. And difficulty is oh. being uh, highlighted here at 2017 Heartlines. There you see Kevin getting a uh, little slick on that course there. Not quite pulling that frontside flip, but this guy has a very high contest IQ. He knows exactly how to recover. So now is this just a recon run for him, knowing that he's already had that big fault to start? <laughs> you know, a guy like Kevin with that much contest experience just pretends the fall doesn't happen, just like in sports. You got to keep it moving, keep that confidence up. Gapping out to that nose blunt, great finish, great recovery from Kelvin Hoffler. So Hoffler checks in with a time of 32.5, a little slower, but once he got things going after this fall, it was rock solid. Yeah, that would have been a really fast run had he not had that fall. Let me see the backside over crooks. Gapping out to this nose blunt slide. Perfect. Kelvin knows what it takes to do well in contests. He's won the SLL Super Crown. 2015. 73-6-7 puts him currently in third. That's his adjusted score, so Kelvin Hoffer will head back to the top. Alec Majerus, the 21-year-old out of Rochester, Minnesota, now residing in Southern California. And you look at the start list for this final, you've got the veterans, the newcomers, and then just the rock stars like Majerus. Totally. Yeah, and Alec is primarily known as a video part skater. He uh, filmed three video parts in one year last year, mm. which is unheard of. So. Uh, it's great to see him out here competing at Heartlines. He knows what it takes to do well in a contest, but um, primarily known for really, really technical tricks. Nice backside Smith grind there. And the frontside Feeble. It's a good run so far, even though we've got one fall. It's still a very quick time as Majera stops the clock at 33.7. So again, you factor in that fall it could be a whole different story but he does get another crack at lane one yes there we see the 180 ollie to fakie 50 50 that's a really difficult trick he got washed out on that and then the front side nose grind grabbing front side was great and then we see the gap out front side blunt slide adding some difficulty by taking it to fakie great first run from alec margeris even though he got washed out there on the first turn he packs a lot into 33.7 seconds, comes up with an adjusted score of 78. He's got another crack at it. Last year's champion, fan favorite, Nyjah Houston will lay down his first run on lane one when we return to Heartlines. From Detroit, Michigan, you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. I am your host, Sal Masekela, and this is Heartlines. This is year three of this one-of-a-kind event, and the focus has been primarily on the finals, but there's much more to it than just the final runs. You see, 21 international athletes of diverse backgrounds were invited to Detroit to show off their skills. With only three skaters qualified straight into the finals based on last year's standings, 18 skaters battled it out in the qualifiers for the seven spots remaining. Now, this event was created to highlight the best of the best skaters, regardless of what country you hail from, whether you're a competition skater or not. Diversity is king here in Detroit. So we're going to break down the elements and the competitors that make up Heartlines. Red Bull Heartlines, Heart Plaza. The cream of the crop in the world of skateboarding. Huge crowd here to see some of the top skateboarders in the world. Here we go, Heartlines underway. You cover to Red Bull Heartlines. Well, here we go. Oh! Oh, look at this! What? Oh! Woo! <laughs> Oh, 
Well, just getting an invite to this event is huge, and then making one of the top 10 spots, Chris, shows just how good of a skater you are. Yeah, these guys are handpicked by Ryan Sheckler. It's a super dynamic and diverse group of skateboarders, all en route to find our best overall street skater. Well, there is the man right now, the defending champion, 22-year-old Nyjah Houston out of Huntington Beach, California. It seems like whenever he steps on the course, everyone else stops. Even the competitor is <laughs> going to see what Nyjah is going to do. <sighs> Nyjah Houston has the highest contest IQ yep. in skateboarding. And there you see it at work. Nice nose blunt slide. And the 5 0 grind through the hallway. Into the Smith grind. Yeah, Nyjah is also currently the most winningest, winningest skateboarder. Backside over crooks. And here comes the speed Great element start. flying into the plaza. Uh, gapping over those speed bumps. Oh my, what a finish. And under 33 seconds. The good news for the fans, he gets one more crack at lane number one. Not so good for the rest of the competitors. That was an amazing first run from Nigel Houston. There you see the 360 flip. And going into this competition, the question was, can Nyjah make adjustments? The course is a bit smaller, a bit scaled back, and the answer is a resounding yes. Nyjah can make adjustments here at Heartlines 2017. So much going on in there, and there you see he goes into first place with an 86.67. Nyjah Houston in first place, and we're just on run one. He's with Tina. And Nyjah moving into the lead with that run. Nyjah, you're coming back as the defending champion. So is there more pressure with that, less pressure? How do you approach it? Because with what you just did there, it doesn't look like you had any pressure. Yeah, it definitely adds a little pressure, you know? But uh, I feel good out here. All it is is practice, man. I've just been practicing this course, and uh, it's feeling good. I'm stoked. You know, you got to sit and watch everyone actually do qualifiers. Is that tough for you at all? Uh, no, I mean, if anything, it's good. You get to see what other people are doing out there. You get to think about what you need to do to win. So, uh, yeah, see how it goes. Right, have some fun. Thanks, Nyjah. Guys. Thank you, Tina. Nyjah Houston in first place with an 86.67 ahead of Chase Webb and Ryan Sheckler currently sitting in third just ahead of Alec Majerus. When we return, the skaters will get a second run on lane number one here at Heartlines. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series and Heartlines here in Detroit, Michigan. I am your host, Sal Masekela. How you handle adverse situations molds who you are, not only as an athlete, but also as a human being. 2016 was an especially difficult year, wrought with injuries for many in the professional skateboarding community. The visionary behind Heartlines, Ryan Sheckler, he had to watch from the sidelines last year due to a knee injury. And Felipe Gustavo also suffered a knee injury and tore his ACL during practice for this event last year. Both, though, are back competing in the finals. So the question is, how have Sheckler and Gustavo turned the pain and misfortune into an opportunity to excel in the sport that they love and an event that they are both very passionate about. Power lines last year ended up tweaking my knee a little bit. One man that's not competing, the creator of this contest, is Ryan Sheckler. Last year I was hurt. Wow! Oh. Oh. Like he landed that before he planned to. Last year here, tore my ACL on my knee. Oh no, dude, is he all right? Oh man. A lot of thoughts went through my head, that, like I'll never be able to skate again. For an athlete, it's pretty hard, you know? Like, a lot of people go through injuries, they never come back. If you get injured, you can either go through the process of getting back to being on your board, or it's too much for you and you get out. For us, we all have to figure out how to get back on the board. Last year, I couldn't skate because I tore my meniscus. Put me out for six months. I was like a long seven months without skating. I went to the gym for like six, seven hours a day. I just learned so much about my body, like eating better and like stretching and doing all that stuff. It makes me a better skateboarder. Being conservative over our bodies, but at the same time go full force, it's really tough. Watching Hardlines last year, I mean, I think it was a positive for me to actually be able to see how the contest was run. This year though, I'm skating. I feel like a 13 year old kid again that just wants to skate. My knee feels like a steel metal now. I'm like better than before, so it's amazing. Can't wait just like go to hard lines.
Well, Chris, unfortunately, injury is part of the game. Yes, tough injuries and coming back from them is part of pro skateboarding. How bad do you want it? And if you're Felipe Gustavo, you want it very, very bad. You heard him talk about all those hours in the gym. And here he is at Heartlines 2017, looking solid. Starting off with a nolly flip there. Felipe not quite having the same pace that we saw from Nyjia or Ryan Sheckler. Yeah, you know, Felipe is much more of a uh, technician. Skates the raw streets. There you see him skating through our ha hallway doing that backside Smith grind. You know, that crooked grind. Much more of a raw street skater. There you see that. Wow! That was one of the most difficult tricks we've seen at Heartlines 2017. The kickflip nose blunt side. That was amazing. Oh, not quite hanging on, going for a switch dance backside tail slide. That's actually a difficult enough trick regular, and he's going backwards trying to switch dance. There you see a kickflip into a nose grind, controlled, as you mentioned, Todd. Not uh, taking the fastest route through right. the heart lines, lane number one, but definitely controlled and some very, very difficult moves, like this kickflip nose blunt slide, one of the most difficult things we've seen all weekend. So his time was just under 38 seconds. Adjusted his score now is a 73.67 for Felipe Gustavo, who's back from injury. He's now standing by with Tina. All right, Felipe, lane one is done. Well, how would you judge that run? Um, I don't know. I was just trying to land something different than a first run, you know? And then I'm not even caring about speed. I'm just having fun doing the trick that I love to do. So I don't know. Cool. You know, last year you missed it again because of injury. There was a couple of you guys just to be back competing. I know a lot of people were really excited to see you back here. That's the winning for me, you know, just be able to skate again, skate with everybody, just being in a contest again. That's, you know, it's been a year for now, you know, it's a long, that was a long time not skating, but hyped to be back and then let's go, you know. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of fans are excited to see you as well. And a smile on his face. Great to have Felipe back as a small weather system seems to be moving over the Detroit area. And that means a little bit of rain. And Chris, obviously, we have to slow the contest down, actually bring it to a stop for now for safety reasons. Yes, Todd, we are downtown Detroit in the streets. And with street skating comes the weather factor. So we've got a bit of a rain delay on our hands. All right, for more on how they're going to address this, let's check in with Tina again. Todd, we have had a couple rain delays today. Now, it is quite dangerous for the skateboarders when this course does get wet. The wood gets slippery, the rails get slippery, and even just a few minutes of rain in this course needs to get uh, basically dry for the event to continue on again. Now, you can see behind me the course workers working away to do that dry the course and you see that that's essentially a leaf blower and it uh it just dry blow dries everything and they do have mops and that mops up everything so even a couple minutes of rain the course gets wet but they can dry this course relatively quickly as well and we get back to the event todd all right thank you tina keep dry out there and the fans are not deterred by the rain and they're willing to wait it out so we're going to take a quick break as they dry out the course when we come back We'll get right to the competition. This is Heartlines from Detroit, Michigan. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Heartlines from Detroit, Michigan. I am Sal Masekela, and we have had some weather move in, which puts us on a temporary rain delay. So while they dry out the course, we're going to check in with my friend, Tina Dixon, who caught up earlier with a very special Heartlines qualifier, Brazil's Leticia Buffoni. So when organizers were looking at the criteria as to who to invite this year to Red Bull Heartlines, Leticia Buffoni, you found yourself included in that list. What an honor. What were you thinking when you first found the uh, found out your invitation? So when they first invited me, I was kind of like scared because last year the park was really big. But then I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm the only girl skating. I think it's going to be amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm stoked to be here and be able to skate with the boys. You know, it's not a women's event. It's not a men's event. It's a skateboarding event. How does this push women skateboarding and how does it push yourself? Yeah, it pushed myself a lot to be skating with the guys because they're so good. So it pushed me to skate better and better. And uh, this is awesome for us because we don't have anything like this. Women's doesn't have, it only has like only two events a year. So it's good to be here to be representing the girls. Yeah, and it's been so much fun to watch you skate. And guys, something to note, I'd say Leticia has the most fans here in Detroit. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tina. It is so cool to see Leticia not just competing, but holding her own amongst the men. How do you feel about that at home, huh? 
How about the return of Ryan Sheckler and Felipe Gustavo to competition and the pure dominance of Nigel Houston? Can he be beat? We have plenty to talk about, so let's have a conversation. Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any manner in which you get social. Just make sure you do so at RB Sig Series and tag us with the hashtag Red Bull Heartlines. Or, of course, you can go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com where we have plenty more exclusive content just for you about this event, plus our entire schedule for the year. And if that's not enough, you can also download the Red Bull TV app where you can watch this show and catch up on every episode from every season. You're welcome. Oh, and the weather delay? It's over. The course is finally ready for competition, and Australia's Tommy Finn is at the start ready to drop. So I'm going to send it over to Todd Harris and Chris Patras for the call. Thank you, Sal, for handling all that business. You are right. There is Tommy Finn, the 28-year-old Australian, set to drop in on his second run on lane one. Remember, there's two lanes. Everyone gets two runs on each one. And just crazy how just 15 minutes ago the rain was coming down. And now look at the skies, Chris. This Sun is beautiful. Is shining. Great weather for skateboarding. <laughs> Sun poked his head out. See Tommy Finn off to a good start. Nice nollie nose manual into that 360 flip. Nice backside 5-0. Tommy, one of the more precise street skaters we've got out here at Red Bull Heartlines. Nice backside lip slide into the crooked grind. Tommy is uh, 28, one of our oldest competitors, but man, he really has been just getting better and better with age. What a finish. Oh, and he comes unglued at the very end. Surgical-like precision from Tommy Finn and great speed as well. And we see that 360 flip. Booyah, into the camera. Into a nice backside lip slide there. Maintaining his speed straight into the crooked grind. And then a kick flip into a backside lip slide, almost hanging mm. on. Well, the adjusted score will be a 68.33 for Tommy Finn. And congratulations and thanks to the course workers for getting that course dried up so fast for Tommy. Well, the weather has not curbed these fans' enthusiasm as Canadian Ryan DeCenzo signs a few autographs. We'll be back with more from the Motor City here at Heartlines. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Heartlines from Heart Plaza in downtown Detroit, Michigan. Todd Harris joined by Chris Pastris. Huge crowd here to see some of the top skateboarders in the world compete on this course. And the sun is now out and shining blue skies are above us. And this is run number two on lane number one. This is Alec Majerus. Yeah, and with uh, the judging highlighting difficulty this year, this really, uh, opens the door for a guy like Alec Margeris, who's got very difficult tricks and in his Chris, bag. And Chris, that's the same spot he crashed on run number one. Yeah, you know, that's a, it's a hard line to make. You gotta make a 90 degree turn there after that bump to ledge, and then get right into these other ledges, into the massive ramp there, straight into the flat rail. So that 90 degree turn has taken out more than a few competitors. And it really slowed his time down, which is a key element in the scoring. So it looks like Alec Majerus, the 21-year-old originally from Rochester, Minnesota, is going to have to stay with run number one in that 81. Yeah, Alec, is, uh, he's gotten enough contest experience to know this run's throwaway. He's got an 81 for run number one, so he'll definitely be sticking with that score. So here it is one more time, this very dicey corner for Majerus. Yeah, you see after that bump to ledge, it's a 90 degree turn. The course is a bit slippery and slick, so it's proved tough for some of our competitors. And there we see the front side feeble, backside 180ing out. Nice recovery from Alec Margeris. So he will hold on to his first run on lane number one. Remember, we still have lane two where the athletes get two more chances as we send it down to Tina Dixon, who's with Alec Majerus. Well, and Alec, you're still sitting in fourth place, but you know, what impresses me with skateboarders is you guys can fall and you can keep getting back up. Just how do you keep the resilience and the frustration uh, from not getting to you, especially on a run like that? Uh, I don't know. I just try to have fun, you know. It's not always going to work the way you want it to, but you just got to have fun, you know. All the friends are here. It's all just fun, really. Okay, now you talked to me earlier about your thumb. 
And I got to follow up on that. How is the thumb doing, especially on that first crash? Yeah, actually, it was like the first trick when I got here. I fell like on my thumb kind of funny and tweaked it. And it hurts, but at least it's not my foot or my ankle. You know, I can still skate. So I'm glad about that. Well, now moving on to lane two. Have fun. Thanks, Alec. Keeping a positive outlook for Alec Majerus as we go back to the start. And this is Ryan Desenzo, the 30-year-old out of Vancouver, British Columbia. There you see Ryan waxing up his board. It's a common tool for street skaters for those rails. Uh, ledges, you got to wax up that board, make them slippery. Nice frontside 360 into the kickflip. Backside nose grind. Ryan is a getting a lot super, out of this section. Yeah, he is a really, really diverse skateboarder. Does really well in uh, best trick formats, but skates transitions well, skates rails well, can film video parts. So Ryan Desenzo definitely has what it takes to do here at Heartlines, do well at Heartlines. And a great time by Desenzo. He checks in at 32.7 seconds. So not actually blitzing the course, but very strong on lane number one for Desenzo as he is done with lane one, as we look at it one more time, these highlights. Yeah, that run uh, started with a bang and ended with a bang. It's what a contest machine like Ryan Desenzo wants. Nice backside nose grind there. Controlled. Gapping out to this backside lip slide. That was a great run from Ryan Desenzo. So Desenzo's adjusted score is a 74-6-7. That slots him currently in fifth place as he gets ready for lane number two. To the top of the course we go. This is Belgium's Axel Kreisberg, just 22 years of age, and he just burst onto the scene with competitions like Heartlines, where everyone got to know this kid, and he's got so much style, Chris. Yeah, you know, Axel has been doing well in European contests for a few years now, and he burst onto the scene at last year's Heartlines, placed third, and uh, put the world on notice. Axel, Axel Kreisberg has arrived. Nice 5 0 grind into that Smith grind, keeping his speed. I think the challenge at this year's Heartlines with the smaller course will be difficulty for Axel Kreisberg. Will the judges see this run as difficult enough? Wow, had the flow at 34.9 seconds in length. It seemed like he hit almost every single feature on the course, and a little something extra for the fans here at Heart Plaza. Yes, there you see a Nice switch nose manual, controlled, making that tough 90 degree turn that's caught up a couple of our skaters into the nice long 5-0. Into the Smith grind through the hallway. Solid run. And then the switch front side board slide. Will our judges think that run is difficult? That is the question. So he's looking for a bit of an improvement. 67.33 was his first run score. And it does go up a little bit, 68.67. That has Kreisberg currently in eighth place for the Belgian skater. But everyone's chasing this man right now, 22-year-old Nyjah Houston out of Huntington Beach, California. He is the defending champion at Red Bull Heartlines, and he is on course for his second run. Yeah, Nyjah has a great run in the books, so expect a bit more difficulty this time through the course now that he's got his his safety run secured. Chris, every time you watch him skate, it's just so smooth and effortless, and it's not easy what he's doing out there. Yeah, he added in that kickflip backside lip slide there. That was very, very difficult and controlled. Picking up some speed for this final trick. What's he got? Oh, my. Another kickflip frontside board slide. Perfect. 33.7 seconds of absolute beauty from Nyjah Houston. Nyjah is a true competitor, and he's been able to adjust to the Heartlines format, the speed factor, the wow factor. There you see a kickflip frontside board slide. The precision, kickflipping over that gap, down to frontside board slide on that handrail. Nyjah Houston, ladies and gentlemen. 
Well, impressive score of 89, adjust to 85, so he stays in first place, and lane one is now complete. No surprise, the defending champion, Nyjah Houston, leads the way with that 85. He is ahead of Chase Webb and Ryan Sheckler. Alec Majerus there in the mix in number four. Ryan Desenzo cracking the top five, but we still have lane two to go. The skaters, including the current leader there, Nyjah Houston, now take on lane two when we return. This is Heartlines, and you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Heartlines in Heart Plaza, which has been transformed into a gladiator-like amphitheater for the skateboarding event of the year, Heartlines. Two lanes, two runs per lane, and the runs are timed, and you're scored out of 100, and you have to skate in a forward direction. Each obstacle can only be hit once per run. And remember, time is a huge element. Time placement is subtracted from the overall score to determine the final score. And we are set to go with lane two, run one. This is Australian Tommy Finn dropping in. Starting off with a nollie crooked grind there. You know Tommy Finn wants to improve on his lane number one scores in lane number two. It's off to a good start so far. Yeah, he's currently sitting in ninth place after lane number one, and he's just going to work at this thing. Just a little bit of a variation here, but they're still coming into the plaza, and the fans now get their first look at Tommy Finn dropping in. Yeah, lane number two starts off big and fast, and it seems to be favoring Tommy Finn skating so far. Oh, much faster, too. He comes in at 32.2 seconds. So the Aussie out of Brisbane has completed one of two runs on lane two. You see the nose grind on that big hubba ledge, recovering. Perfectly executed 360 flip there. And then eyeing up the handrail for the kickflip backside lip slide. Perfection, Tommy Finn. So much going on there. His score is an 81, his time 32.2, so it adjusts to a 71.17. He's with Tina. Thanks, guys, and Tommy, you stayed on your board, but how close was that to what you wanted to do? Um, I, 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 don't, I wanted to do a different trick at the end. I just wanted to make sure that I'm set up right when I get to it. Just then, I wasn't set up quite right, so I just did the easier trick, but hopefully this next one, next one I might get it. You know, that's interesting. How much of your runs are planned, and then how much is on the fly? Um, well, of course, like this, a lot of my stuff's kind of on the fly. Usually I'm more planned and like I know exactly what I'm doing. But this is kind of like hard to try trick over and over because the stuff's quite big, some of the obstacles. And it's like it's hard to practice it over and over again, you know, in your body kind of. So it's like kind of, you know, I can do it in my mind, you know, and just kind of go for it when the run comes up and it's working. So, see. Best of luck on the uh, second run in lane two, awesome, guys. So, Chris, some interesting insight there from Tommy Finn going organic. And a lot of these guys are dropping in and, like, on the fly, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, totally. And I think he's talking about a kickflip backside nose blunt slide instead of the kickflip backside lip slide at the end of his run. So maybe we'll see that on the next run. Well, this is 22-year-old Chase Webb out of Murrieta, California, getting set to drop in on lane number two. This is run one for him. Wow. Oh, it that Chase. hot. Yeah, slipping out on that kickflip 5-0 attempt. Recovering with the crooked grind. Chase has been dominating practice, dominating qualifying. And he's a few points behind Nigel Houston. So I think Chase is trying to add some difficulty to his run. That's why he went for the kick, kickflip 5-0 off uh, the top of lane number two there. We'll have one more crack at it and almost a full pole there for Chase Webb. A beautiful run other than that early fall. Great recovery. Knows exactly what to do. Pick it up and keep it moving. Nice crooked grind there on the big hubba. One of the only competitors we've seen hit that wall. Frontside wall riding there and then going into this gap to blunt slide. Great recovery. And one of the fastest times we've seen today at 28.7 seconds. So his adjusted score is a 77.17. That puts Chase Webb currently into second place. Ryan Desenzo is getting ready to hit lane two for a shot at one of these beautiful trophies. This is Heartlines from Heart Plaza in downtown Detroit, Michigan. And you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Heartlines from Detroit, Michigan. The sun is out and the fans are enjoying the action. 
The man behind this event, Ryan Sheckler, signing autographs for a few of them, and competitors now getting ready for lane number two. And this will be run number one on that lane two for Ryan Desenzo out of Vancouver, British Columbia. Fifth place after lane number one, but Chris, as you know, Desenzo's got all kinds of tricks up his sleeves, and uh, he could uncork something beautiful right here on lane two. Definitely. I, I believe Ryan is going to want to crack the 80s with the score to make podium. There you see that switch tail slide. Off to a very good start so far. Nice nose bone and a big quarter pipe there. Long blunt slide, hanging it. Waxing up his board worked. <laughs> And after that brief rain delay, the sun is out and the track looks very fast. Wow, wow. Nice frontside flip to end things off there. Ryan Desenzo, that was an amazing first run for lane number two. That switch tail slide on the massive hubba. And there we see a blunt slide, a pretty basic trick, but not easy on a handrail that long. And then perfectly execu executed frontside flip Landing over his bolts, total control. Great run from Ryan Desenzo. Well, you called it. He did crack the 80s in 85, but with the adjustment for time, he goes 79-83 for Desenzo, and he's standing by with Tina. Yeah, and Ryan, you did bump up into second, and you told me earlier you were better in lane two. So what did you think of that score in that run? Um, that was exactly what I was planning to do, so hopefully I can step it up in the next one. And I mean, I only got one more, so we're going to go all in. You know, when you say step it up, where can you change things up? What variations can you do? I mean, you can put in a harder trick at the start or try and go bigger right at the end. I mean, you can always go faster, too. Yeah, you can always go faster, and I know you've been working on that. Thanks, Ryan. Best of luck. So from the Canadian to the Belgian, Axel Kreisberg set to drop in on lane number two. This will be his first run just 22 years of age, and Chris, he's one of those skaters that, as you pointed out, burst on the scene really when he came over to Heartlines for the first time, but he's really been making a name for himself at just 22 years of age, one of the best in the business. Yeah, Axel has had an amazing year so far, and uh, hopefully oh. can put it all together here at Heartlines 2017. There you see a fall on that disaster attempt. And lane number two is big and fast, just like Axel likes to skate, so hopefully, uh, puts it all together in run number two, lane number two. Would you say it's harder? Is lane two harder than lane one? Definitely uh, some more difficult options, some gnarly obstacles. It starts mm. off with that uh, gap to the ledge, and then you go straight into that massive hubba and straight into the quarter pipe. So it's a more difficult section. There you see him half cabbing over the stairs into that bank. A switch 50-50, almost pulling it, landing on those trucks, but a little off, and there's a fall for Axel Kreisberg's. Not the run he wanted. 61-3-3 on adjusted time, and he's standing by with Tina. Thanks, guys, and what's interesting, Axel, you did tell me earlier that you were hurt. You got that ankle injury, yet you still came out and skated. Yeah, I'm just trying because it's like fun to be here, and it's fun to skate this contest, so I don't know, might as well just try, but even if it's like painful, but whatever, it's fun. You know, a lot of the guys had two full days of practice, yet you just showed up last night. Yeah, I was, uh, I was just I was just like at the hotel like last night, just icing my foot, like just chilling. And I don't know, I just wanted to skate today, but I don't know. It's not like 100%, but I'm just happy to be here. And I don't know, it's cool. No, we're happy to watch you skate. Thanks, Axel. Thank you. Guys. Well, Tina, can you sense a running theme here, Chris? Everyone seems happy to be here and having fun are the key words. and. No one epitomizes happy and fun like this man, Nigel Houston. <laughs> 22 years of age, absolutely owning this course. Nice start with that backside flip. Yeah, he's smiling after his runs. He's all seriousness and business before. That fakey flip into that bank was super, super difficult. You see, taking a unique line with that kick flip off that high hip into that backside Smith grind. This is all business for Nigel Houston. Man that's got seven X Games gold medals. You know he wants to win again here at Heartline. And perfect yet again under 30 seconds. He has not had a fall in this competition. The defending champion is just laying it down. That super difficult fakie kickflip over the stairs into the bank. Making a couple critical decisions there on what to do next. There you see the backside Smith grind. Perfect and then gapping out to this nose blunt slide. 
perfect run in the books. Wow, Nigel Houston is absolutely on a tear here, defending his title from a year ago. His score, a 90.67 adjusted for time. It still is rock solid with an 86.83. He is currently in first place. So this is what the leaderboard looks like as of right now with Houston in the lead with the 86-83, then Ryan Desenzo, Chase Webb, Tommy Finn, Felipe Gustavo has now moved into fifth place. And a final opportunity for the man who thought this whole thing up. This is Ryan Sheckler, 27 years young out of San Clemente, California, looking fit and ready to attack lane number two on his final run. Yeah, you know Shex wants it after sitting out last year. He's back with a vengeance. Hopefully has the run we are all used to from Ryan Sheckler. Showing that creativity. Oh, that massive backside flip hanging on with the toes there into the front side 50-50. Picking up some speed. Nice backside flip. Getting composed for the final trick. He needs this. Oh, got uh, a little lost there with his footing and definitely didn't uh, get that last trick. He was looking for something more. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and he would have needed it for scores. There's a kickflip 5-0. There's that massive kickflip. We saw Nyjah take that front side. And there's Shex, solid 50-50. And then setting his footing up for the final trick. This is a key section to the judges scoring. And uh, unfortunately, didn't get the trick off that he wanted. Didn't get set up correctly. So he played it conservatively on that last trick, but does land it. So Sheckler comes in with a score of 78.33, adjusted for time. It's a 76.33, and he currently resides in fourth place. But it's so good just having him at his own competition. Oh, for sure, and he's skating great. This is Paul Hart at the start of run number two on lane two. Young man out of Jacksonville, Florida. Remember, it's two runs on each lane, then we combine your two best, get your average, and that's how we'll determine the winner. Wow, that fakie ollie to fakie 50-50, that is really, really difficult. Doesn't look it, but very scary trick. And the Nolly heel flip. Paul's been all smiles all weekend long. The crowd is really uh, taking a liking to Paul Hart. Good energy. Nice tail slide there, setting up for the final trick. He's gonna need this for scores. Oh, so Paul Hart can't land that last trick on his second and final run, but a really good, strong technical run here. Yes, you see the fakey Ollie placing it precisely into a fakey 50-50. Backside 180 Nolly over the stairs there. And going for the backside nose blunt, a very difficult trick. Almost locked it in, but not quite. He gets a 65, but his time was a little longer than the most, 30.6 seconds, so adjust that, he drops down to a 55.33. Competitors and fans getting ready for run two from lane two when we return to Detroit, Michigan, and Heartlines, you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Heartlines from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. As the crowds are getting their souvenirs from our top skaters, we are ready for the final run of this competition. Tommy Finn, the 28-year-old from Brisbane, Australia, set to drop in. Remember, it's two runs on each lane, and it all comes down to this for Tommy Finn. Nice Nolly crooked grind there to start things off into the nose grind. Tommy's career has really been picking up momentum the last few years. Remember, he told Artina Dixon that he had something special possibly planned for this last hit as he makes his way into the amphitheater here at Hart Plaza. Yeah, Tommy rides for me at Stereo Skateboards, and he's really one of the most nice, humble guys. Pleasure dealing with Tommy Finn. See what he's got for a final trick there. There nice. it is! The kickflip backside nose blunt. That's what he uh, was hinting about in the interview with Tina. Nailed it. Great run. What a way to wrap up the competition for Tommy Finn. Nose grind, avoiding that wall, very precise there. And then the 360 flip every time. 
Eyeing up the final feature, the rail. Kick flipping, landing and locking into a backside nose blunt. That's one of the more difficult tricks we've seen of the contest. Done perfectly by Tommy Finn. There you see Felipe Gustavo congratulating him. His score's an 87, adjusted for time. It checks in as a 73.17. So Tommy Finn currently sitting in fifth place. Yeah, that was a major deduction for time. Yep. Kelvin Hoffler of Brazil, keeping the international flavor going. We just saw an Australian, now a Brazilian. And uh, Hoffler has not had his best time here at Heartlines, but this guy is so capable of big, big scores. Yeah, Kelvin Hoffler is a warrior. And uh, besides Nigel Houston, I'd say he's got the highest contest IQ. So I guarantee he's studying scores and making the adjustments he needs. When you talk about contest IQ, how much is he watching other guys knowing what he needs to do or just skating his own line? Uh, a guy like Kelvin Hoffler, he is studying scores in other people's runs. As you see, he's really added some difficulty here. Um, and Kelvin Hoffler knows he needs to make adjustments oh. when he's not scoring the way he wants. And there you see him adding a super difficult trick at the end of his run, like that kickflip blunt slide to Fakie. And how about the speed, 28 seconds. Yeah, I think Kelvin got some uh, deductions that he didn't like in lane number one. And here you see him pick him up, picking up momentum and speed, that frontside blunt slide, and then ending things off with this super difficult kickflip frontside blunt slide to Fakie. That was an amazing, that was one of the best runs we've seen out here. I don't know how he landed that. 86-3-3 adjusted for 79, and that means Kelvin Hoffler moves into second place, and he's now with Tina. <laughs> wow, and he just turned to me and said, I, I don't know how that happened. Well, Kelvin, it was your final run, and you made it happen. Just how does that feel, especially when it matters most? He's always like that. Always the last run, last minute. And my wheel, like, kind of like weird right now, but yeah, it's fine. Great contest. Thanks, Shackley, for uh, hitting me up. And, uh, Thanks so much. Congratulations, what a great run. So Kelvin Hoffler with a fantastic run, and look at this, the stars are still lined up. Can anyone take down Nyjah Houston? The next man to try is gonna be young Alec Majerus. Yeah, Alec definitely has the difficulty it takes to match Nyjah Houston. Let me see the front side crooked grind. Oh, that blunt slide scraping against that wall down that hubba. Nice backside ollie. Nose grind. This is a great run so far from Alec Majerus. A lot Picking of speed. Up speed, definitely. Wow. Not That's got to be the epitome of clean. And do you see that time? Oh, Under that was 25 great. 25 seconds for Alec Majerus. Yeah, nulling in that front side board slide. He knew he needed a fast time here. There you see the front board. Front blunt, excuse me into the nose grind. As you mentioned, Todd, going super fast through the course, trying to minimize those deductions. And there you see the nollie front board, bolts. Well, this should be another big score for Alec Majerus, his final run of the competition. Adjusted score, 81-17. He goes into second, and he's with Tina. And Alec, with that run, you just moved into second. Uh, resilience, you kept it, but did you do everything that you wanted to do in that run? I did. I'm pretty hyped. Couldn't be happier, really. You know, it was really fun. Yeah, you know, you were our number one qualifier with the injured thumb and everything. What made today just click for you? Uh, I just didn't think about the pressure. I just kind of wanted to have fun with all my friends. So that's the easiest way to think about it, you know? No stress. And it seems to be working and paying off. Thanks, Alec. And thank you, Tina. We are down to our final competitors here at Heartlines. Before we see those, we send you back to the studio and Sal Masakela. Todd, my friend, this is deja vu or something because this is very reminiscent of last year's competition. Once again, the field is asking themselves, can anyone match Nigel Houston's mastery of this course coupled with his blazing speed? We only have a couple of competitors left to take their final runs before we crown a 2017 Heartlines champion. So stay with us. We'll return with more from the Motor City as you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to Detroit. Todd Harris joined by Chris Pastras and Tina Dixon. And we are in the last runs of lane two of our final. This is Canadian Ryan Desenzo. Now, he is going to need a monstrous score to try and overtake Nyjah Houston, and it all starts right now. 
Yeah, Ryan is definitely a contest veteran. He knows what it takes. He knows he's got a near perfect run that has to go down in order to catch Nyjah. He's off to a great start on the, which many people think, Chris, the more difficult lane, lane two. Lane two, for sure, the more difficult of the two lanes. Bigger, faster, and we're seeing that from Ryan Desenzo right now. Oh, and the setup, and he comes off the board on the landing. So Desenzo had a good one going there. Not sure if it would have overtaken Nigel Houston, but a strong effort. Yeah, definitely a strong effort. I think he's going to stick with his run number one score. There you see a switch tail slide. Setting himself up for that blunt slide. So long, locking into it. And then we see the Nolly out to board slide, almost hanging on. And the score coming in for Desenzo, and he will, in fact, stay with that run one score. So he stays currently in fourth place with just two athletes to go, one of them being the defending champion. And this man from Belgium, Axel Kreisberg, just 22 years of age, the only man left in the competition to possibly dethrone the reigning champion, Nigel Houston. Yeah, Axel's going to need a, a really, really difficult run here to catch Nigel. See him half cabbing into the bank. Big disaster. But it certainly has the speed element on lock. Yeah, he made a huge name for himself at last year's Heartlines, like we mentioned. And uh, Axel's come shredding this year, coming off an injury, but definitely a, a strong showing. I think he's been challenged by the smaller course a bit. Mm. Telling Tina Dixon that it's the ankle that he kept iced all last night, and that can't help his cause as Axel Kreisberg's final run comes to a conclusion. See him half cabbing into that big bank, getting speed. Nice 5 0 grind. And going for a switch, big spin heel flip. Not quite hanging on. He wanted to add some difficulty. Well, the adjusted score for Kreisberg is going to be a 64 8 3, which locks him into ninth place. And that means it's victory lap time. A two time champion at Heartlines. Nyjah Houston, one more time, the young man from Huntington Beach, California. And Chris, let's just enjoy this final <laughs> run because he's going to put on a show and he's going to make it look easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> what he just did was just so insanely difficult. The backside 360 kickflip, that nollie heel flip. We see the massive kickflip. He just can't help being consistent. Well, and Ryan you saw him Schechter... cracking and smiling before dropping, smile before dropping in. He's... He's a happy man right now. Well, Ryan Sheckler thought this contest up, but it's Nyjah Houston that has owned it for the last two years. And that's his first fall of the entire competition. Four runs and just one fall for your champion, Nyjah Houston. Crowd is going nuts. Back-to-back -back wins for Nyjah. Take a look at the final standings. It's Nyjah Houston clearly out in front with the 84.83. Alec Majerus, Kelvin Hoffler, Ryan Desenzo, and Chase Webb rounding out the top five. Then it's Sheckler, Finn, Gustavo, Kreisberg, and Hart. Tina Dixon is standing by with the two-time Heartlines champion, Nyjah Houston. Thanks, guys. And Nyja continues to remain dominant here at Red Bull Heartlines. Nyja, I watch you skate, and you are always pushing yourself. But what would you say were the biggest challenges here at Red Bull Heartlines? Um, I'd say, I mean, always the biggest challenge is just the, the competition. You know, all these guys out there are shredding. And, uh, I mean, it's never easy. And um, this course isn't, like, that easy to skate either. You know, we're, some of us, like, aren't used to skating, some of the transition and some of the obstacles. But, yeah. Well, and it was not only about transition and rails. I mean, it was everything, including the speed. Yeah, yeah, the speed part's really interesting, and you definitely have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Consistency seems to be the name of the game for you. Where does that come from? Um, yeah, consistency. I mean, it's always the most important thing in contests, you know? And, uh, I mean, it's honestly just a ton of practice. Ever since I was a little kid, I would just, like, practice tricks over and over and over. And, uh, I mean, in contests like this, like, you, you want to, like, make sure you get down, like, a good first run, so then you allow yourself to be able to try harder tricks in your second run. So, yeah. Congratulations on another big win. Thank you. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. Thank you so much, Tina. Going into this year's Heartlines, all eyes were on Nyjah Houston. The 22-year-old dominated this course last year and clearly was the favorite for today's competition. Pre-qualified for the finals, Nyjah did not disappoint or succumb to the pressure. The elements of speed, style, and flow that make up this contest are perfectly suited for Nyjah's skating talents.
even with the modifications to this year's course, Nyjah attacked both lanes of this course, tricking all the features and at a blistering speed. Congratulations to Nyjah Houston for becoming our 2017 Heartlines champion and capturing the Red Bull signature moment. So once again, it's Nyjah Houston's world and we're just playing in it. But the man who put this whole thing together, his brainchild, Ryan Sheckler is now with Tina Dixon. Well, Ryan, this is the third year for Red Bull Heartlines. I mean, how has it grown from the first year to now? It's so impressive to me. You know, these guys come out here and they skate their hearts out. And, you know, Nyjah just won again. And it was like so deserving and so rad to see just how much he rips, dude. And like everybody here rips so much too. But it's not that, it's the fans. The fans stuck around all day long. We had four rain delays and they didn't care. They're so die hard. Just skateboard fans, Detroit fans, like this is where it's supposed to be. Like Heartlines feels right here. And I had a blast. I feel very blessed I got to skate the contest today. Didn't land exactly what I wanted to, but that's skateboarding. And that's what makes it fun is that it's unique and you know, you're never gonna get the result you think is gonna happen. So. God is great. Thank you, Jesus. This was amazing. I'm so stoked. We'll be back next year, and I can't wait. Yeah, we loved being back here in Detroit for three years, so yeah. looking forward to a fourth. Oh, man. All right, guys. Chris, the operative word today has got to be fun. Oh, it was fun, Todd. And the question going into this event, can Nigel Houston make the adjustments to the smaller, more technical course? And the resounding answer was yes. Congratulations, Nigel Houston. That'll do it from Detroit Skate City as we send it back to the studio and Sal Masekela. Thank you, Todd, and thanks to all of you for joining us at the 2017 Heartlines here in the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan. He has been here twice in the three-year history of Heartlines and stood on top of the podium both times. Dominance. Congratulations to Nigel Houston on pulling off that repeat. And to the Minnesotan, Alec Majerus, who kept on charging despite a broken thumb because it's skateboarding cares about broken bones. And of course, to our first time competitor, the Brazilian Kelvin Hoffler, rounding out the podium. Once again, thank you for hanging out with us. And on behalf of our entire NBC Sports crew, including Todd Harris, Chris Pastris, and Tina Dixon, I'm Sal Masekela, and we will see you next time.